Your brain on one task. Happy brain. Your brain multitasking. Unused brain juice. What the f***? How not to draw an owl. If you're not familiar with how not to draw an owl, it's like first you draw a, a two circle, first you draw one circle, then you draw a second circle, then you draw the f***ing owl. That's the joke, right? So in this case, truly, as tools become more composable, you're able to do things quickly. If there is stack integration tech layers in between that you also need knowledge about, it's not just a you can do x it's you can do x asterisk if you have y and z ready to go oh this is deep th this is on deep note this is, oh this is a company your data assets database and tables you see on the owl your flat files did <laughs> did a meme write this article and data frames go into data validation with great expectations which is some shit that you know exists in this API format. And then you have high quality data in your data product, data documentation, and logging. It all Once you send it through this green rectangle with this Oliver Twist looking fellow, boom. Okay, clean house, clean mind. Your brain on one task, happy brain. Your brain multitasking, unused brain juice. What the f As a literal neuroscientist, will I be disappointed if I read what is cognitively costly don't click yeah maybe we shouldn't if i read that i'm going to explain uh the very first item in what great expectations doesn't do relates to a pilot to see they're so quirky the things that we do it's so much more than the things we don't do they are not a uh, pipeline execution framework makes perfect sense the only problem with this is that we end up with how to draw the pro how to draw an owl problem again data testing uh, of any real value will end up have will have to end up in a pipeline at some point while deep node is not going to set up airflow for you it does provide a gui for scheduling your notebooks scheduling puts your data testing into production level pipeline without any additional learning or peripheral setup if this is your framework in terms of like creating pipelines scheduling notebooks scheduling automated stuff so like it executes a notebook and everything in your notebook just runs through and all you have to manage is that notebook and that notebook has like you know if if you're in r if you're or Python with a Jupa text in the background, whatever it is that like links you back to your source control, and then also links you to like your scheduled whatever the f version controlled no notebook you're using. This all sounds good. This all sounds like stuff that exists and should be useful to you. The sooner you learn it, the better. But there are things out there that allow you to do this without having to uh, learn much more than just what you know in your notebook. Colab doesn't have uh, scheduled notebooks right now. I think they're. Google Cloud version of Colab does. One of the best features is their data docs. Every time you validate uh, tests against your data, great expectations builds a human readable documentation site. These HTML docs describe your validation and results and much more. They continuously update with data quality reports in the image below. You can see the page from the docs showing a failed data set, failed set validation. The data docs are amazing. Now that's cool. This is something that in my modeling and at work, I would just pump out a bunch of graphs that get sent to me on Slack. So graphs get made, they get pushed to me in Slack. I get to see the validation, whether or not it beat a model. And then from there, I could accept or not accept the model. Unfortunately, we're back at the owl drawing issue again. Now we have to host these docs on our website so teams can access it. They're plenty. Okay, we, we get the joke, okay? The punchline is, is good here. The punchline as we know it is for every additional easy thing you do you might need in the background harder things more difficult things i've seen this at play at kfc i've seen this at play many places i've worked when i was in uh when i was in grad school you buy in to something that seemingly fixes one problem and you create another like two or three or several problems right and that is like a bane of tech in some in some cases you solve a really big problem when you when you have stuff like this but you but what you don't end up doing is like the people who need the baseline information to set this shit up. What if your team doesn't have that? What if the support or the IT group doesn't have the things required for you to do this, right? Like for, for example, and this one is a really easy one that us data scientists usually skip over. What if you need security layers on your shit? 
right? Some of these platforms, although they come with like some basics of security layers, maybe the industry that you work in require several more additional layers of security. And what if these, these additional security layers don't easily integrate with the software? because the software comes from a startup or the, or the software that you might be implementing comes from a place where uh, that, the, you know, InfoSec or OpsSec, SecOps isn't something that's on their mind. You know, they just produce a product that seemingly is useful in this really niche industry for this one real reason. I come across that from a lot of different people where they produce something, I look at it and I'm like, oh, interesting. How does this work with security? How does this work when you're integrating data into it and we want like specific pieces of the data de-identified? Or we want specific layers only accessible by certain people? Or we want two-factor across everything and we want like two-factor plus like credentials of whoever's all, like accessing this stuff in the background. Like what if we want more of a seamless login experience? Like what about all these things? And you go to these startups and they're like, oh, well, we could do that. And then several months later, they're still working on like SSO. They, they have a trouble compiling things in as quick of a way as they did because they dropped everything into just one gigantic snowflake schema. These are the things that, that are important at scale where you miss the plot if you, if you don't think about these things as you solve these problems on, on, at smaller cases, in smaller products. So while we, while we solve one thing, we uh, sometimes end up creating problems elsewhere. That's a big, that's a big thing that happens in tech. That's a big th thing that happens in data science.